Chrysler Corporation thoroughly tests every torque flight it manufactures to assure top quality and workmanship. Sophisticated equipment handled by qualified technicians makes sure all torque flights meet Chrysler's exact specifications. This comprehensive testing provides your customers with torque flights less likely to have any problems. We'll be concerned with pre-removal diagnosis and cover transmissions that are fully operable, but with the owner having either a shift quality or shift timing complaint. One thing for certain is you won't need any highly sophisticated or expensive equipment to check them out. And when you get a complaint, you might hear something like this. It takes forever to shift out of first. I feel a harsh jolt when it shifts. The engine revs when it shifts into third. For easier diagnosis, we'll take these and other common complaints and put them into three categories. Poor shift quality, poor shift timing, and transmission slippage. When you receive one of these complaints, the remedy can sometimes be as simple as a fluid level adjustment or as involved as a teardown. Experience shows that proper testing before a teardown or exchange helps to pinpoint the problem. Discussing the complaint with the owner is usually helpful, but at times it can be misleading. This is especially true when a transmission complaint is the result of a poorly tuned engine. In many instances, you may have to depend entirely on your own troubleshooting procedure to determine the problem. For best results, follow this procedure. First, check the fluid level. Then check both the gear shift and throttle linkages. Run a road test, and if necessary, make a governor pressure test. Proper fluid level is essential in providing correct hydraulic pressure to operate the clutches and bands. Low fluid level allows the pump to draw in air, producing a spongy fluid which results in low hydraulic pressure. This condition allows clutches and bands to slip, causing overheating and premature wear. High fluid level causes gears to churn up foam, which results in the same sponginess and slipping produced by too low a fluid level. Incidentally, high fluid level can pass through the pump housing vent and accumulate on the bell housing, causing what appears to be a front pump seal or gasket leak. Let's look at the proper procedure for checking the fluid level. With the engine at idle speed, the transmission at operating temperature, and the selector lever in the neutral position, you're ready to check the fluid level. The level is okay if it's between the full and add one point marks. While you're at it, check the condition of the fluid. It can indicate if the clutches and bands are slipping. Fluid appearance won't tell you much, but feel and odor will. See the reference book for details. Always be careful when checking the fluid to avoid any contaminant from getting into the fluid through the fill tube. When adding to or refilling a transmission, be sure to use only Chrysler-approved Dexron-type fluid. Using other types of fluid may result in premature transmission failure. By the way, if the customer complaint is a rough or erratic 1-2 upshift, this would be a good time to check the kickdown band adjustment. If the fluid level and condition are okay, check the gear shift linkage. The gear shift is connected by a linkage, which positions the manual valve for all six selector settings. In neutral, the gear shift lever should position the manual valve so that both the drive and reverse ports in the valve body are cut off from line pressure. When the linkage is misadjusted, it positions the valve improperly, opening one of the ports to line pressure. This can cause creeping or clutch slipping, depending on how far the valve is out of position. Checking the gear shift linkage adjustment is easy because normal operation of the starter safety switch coincides with correct positioning of the manual valve. With the selector in park, see if the starter operates. Now check it in neutral. Since it won't operate in park, a linkage adjustment is necessary. Move the gear shift lever to park. Loosen the adjustment swivel lock screw, then make sure the swivel block slides freely on the shift rod. This ensures against the preload spring action being reduced by friction. 
Move the shift lever all the way to the rear detent, or park position. And torque the adjustment swivel lock screw to 90 inch pounds. Check your adjustment by seeing if the starter operates in park and in neutral. Before we do a throttle linkage adjustment, let's quickly review the relationship between governor pressure and throttle pressure. Governor pressure increases with car speed, and when it overcomes throttle pressure and spring tension, it pushes the shift valve to the right. Throttle pressure increases with throttle opening, and when spring tension and throttle pressure overcome governor pressure, the shift valve moves to the left. This balance between governor pressure and throttle pressure on the shift valves is an important factor in controlling shift timing. And let's not forget another factor, line pressure, the force which applies the clutches and bands. Line pressure increases with throttle opening. This is true because as more torque is applied to the transmission, more line pressure is required to keep the clutches and bands from slipping. Therefore, it's essential that both the accelerator linkage and the transmission throttle linkage settings be accurate for good shifting. The accelerator linkage should be checked to make sure the throttle valve lever can move to the full open and full close positions. See the service manual for this adjustment. With the engine at operating temperature and the carburetor off the fast idle cam, adjust the idle speed to the correct specifications. This is very important because engine performance is directly related to throttle linkage operation. If engine output is lacking, it could have the same effect on transmission operation as an improperly adjusted throttle linkage. The next step is to loosen the swivel lock screw and slide the swivel back and forth to make sure the preload spring action moves freely. Now you're ready to set the linkage. If you set it too long, it opens the throttle valve more than it should for a given car speed. Throttle pressure is too high, therefore it requires a higher governor pressure to cause the transmission to upshift. Shift timing is delayed, so the upshift is harsh. High throttle pressure also makes the part throttle kickdown operation very sensitive and annoying to the driver. But if you set the linkage too short, the throttle valve opens less than it should for a given car speed. This delayed throttle pressure causes early upshifts, which tend to be mushy and occur at lower than normal car speed. There may also be some engine speed flare-up during the 2-3 upshift. Incidentally, a short linkage setting can also prevent full throttle kickdown action. The correct way to set the linkage is to pull the transmission lever forward and hold it firmly against its internal stop while you torque the lock screw to 100 inch pounds. With the linkage adjusted properly, free play was removed by the preload spring and the throttle lever moves in unison with the accelerator linkage. Throttle linkage adjustment is critical for proper overall vehicle drivability. An improperly set linkage can very easily result in an engine performance complaint After checking the fluid and linkages, go for a road test to see if the shift complaint still exists. Take along a pad and pencil to jot down helpful information like speeds at which shifts occur and if they're smooth. As mentioned previously, engine performance can affect both shift quality and timing. Low engine output due to an out-of-tune engine or some other reason causes the gas pedal to travel farther than normal, which in turn moves the transmission throttle valve farther than normal. This gives you a delayed and harsh upshifting similar to an extended throttle linkage setting, even though the linkage is set correctly. You'll have to tune the engine and take it for a road test to see if the shift problem has been corrected. After the road test, if the shift timing complaint still exists, check the governor pressure. After hooking up a 0 to 100 PSI pressure gauge to the governor port and operating the transmission in drive, have a helper depress the gas pedal and hold at the specified mile per hour ranges while you record the pressures for these speeds. When the wheels have stopped, governor pressure should return to 0 to 1.5 PSI. 
when governor pressure is above this range, the high pressure at standstill prevents downshifting. Compare the readings with the shift speeds listed in the service manual for the particular vehicle you're testing. If governor pressures are incorrect, the governor valve and or weights are probably sticking. With the extension housing removed, service or replace the governor assembly. After you've completed the governor pressure test and performed governor valve service, if the shift quality complaint still remains, remove and service or exchange the valve body. Road test again, and if the problem remains, then pull the transmission for either exchange or reconditioning. Remember to properly fill out all the paperwork to avoid delay in crediting your account. Following a regular procedure when diagnosing transmission complaints determines if the transmission should be removed for either exchange or reconditioning. This procedure eliminates unnecessary exchanges, costly comebacks, and saves you both time and money. And the most important consideration, it keeps your customers confident. Thank you.